Hey everybody, how's it going? Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year to you all. Uh, I just want to say thank you for everything. Um, you guys are absolutely, absolutely incredible, amazing. I can't even begin to thank you guys enough for for this awesome, awesome year. It hasn't even been a year that I've been doing this, but uh, we're coming to the end of this year. So um, thank you very, very, very much. I'm having like the best time with you guys. And um, I can't wait to give you guys more stuff. Like like do more giveaways here coming in 2024 to, uh, you know, to my awesome subscribers. So, uh, today we are going to go through my top five scotches and it'll be very similar to my top five cigars that we did, you know, so a lot of them you're not going to agree with. I know that. Um, but I want to do a top five for very easily found scotches, nothing like 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 this leg like this this leg is absolutely incredible i absolutely 100 percent love this this bottle it is one of my favorite scotches i've ever had uh, this is all i have left of it uh, and it has been sold out all over the world for a very long time already they only made ten thousand of them um i think nine thousand or ninety ninety five hundred uh, were released in the UK and they were sold out within minutes and I think 500 bottles I think went to Canada and that was the only places in the world these things went to and then they sold out within a week and they're gone and the aftermarket on these things are absolutely crazy right now so that never made me my top five um, like this guy here really 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 love this one uh, you can't find this anymore. And this is one of my absolute favorite, favorite scotches. This is a unicorn bottle. They haven't made these in a few years. You can't find these anymore. Um, this one here is super awesome. I absolutely love it. But uh, it is, uh, it's, it's expensive and it's going up in price. And, uh, um, you know, probably could have made my top five, but... These ones can be, the leg 16 can be kind of hard to find. Um, it's, uh, it's a tricky scotch and, um, um, it's, uh, you know, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there and, uh, and, and it's, and it can be, it can be hard, hard to get, uh, here in, uh, Canada, half for tax, you're looking at about 200 bucks for the bottle, you know, here in Winnipeg, it's like $184. Uh, this one here is another amazing one. I absolutely love Highland Park. I'm looking for the Valkyrie uh, to this. So if you guys know of anybody who's got the Valkyrie, I have the Valk Knot and I have the, the Val Father. Um, this one here, I have an extra bottle. That's why it's open. Uh, it's the Valk Knot. But these are limited release ones. And um, they can be very hard to, you know, in certain places can be hard to find. So um, for those reasons... Those ones never made um, top five. So uh, I want something that it kind of more of across the board, you know, like maybe something from Isla, something from uh, Speyside, something from Orkney, something from uh, Highlands, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so a little uh, low, uh, maybe a lowland one. So kind of a mixture across Scotland. So I didn't want to double up on everything because, I mean, Leg 16, anything Lefroig, um, anything Ardbeg, those would be 150,000%. Uh, they would, those would just make my top fives because I love peated scotches. So, um, I kind of wanted to even, even it out on, uh, on, uh, on the scotches and the, uh, locations where they're, they're found in, uh, in Scotland, but I also wanted to keep the price down, uh, below below $200. Uh, actually I wanted to keep it down below $150. So something that's, uh, easily available, relatively inexpensive to, to, to get. And, um, uh, yeah, there's one here that is $200 in Winnipeg, but you can get it in Calgary for $109. So go to BSW and pick out, uh, what's the number on number two, the number two scotch, go to bsw.com and order it out of Calgary and it's $109. 
And if you bought it here in Winnipeg, it's $200. That is insane. I mean, it's, in my opinion, it's probably worth $200, but I wouldn't want to pay $200 when I can get it for half the price in Calgary. So do that. Uh, and check out BSW as well. Like they've got so many crazy, crazy deals and crazy sales. But look at your local market first and see what you're paying and see if it's worth it. So like say something is like 80 bucks here in your local market and it's say $60 at BSW or $70 at BSW. Well, you have to add about $10 per bottle if you're ordering say four bottles because it's about $40 Canadian to ship it. Uh, so it's about $10 a bottle. So if it's 80 bucks in say Winnipeg, and it's seventy dollars in Calgary. Well, it's not worth it because it's the same price. But if it's half the price, or fifty dollars cheaper, or forty dollars cheaper, then of course it's hundred percent worth it. But uh, but then there's some like in Winnipeg here. There's some that are that are actually cheaper than it is out out west. So just know your prices, look at what you've got, and then price match to see what BSW has. Um, so anyway, these are these are scotches that I've had. Uh, I've had so many different great scotches this year, especially with this uh, our whiskey club and friends. We have sampled some incredible, incredible scotches. So if you are in Winnipeg, check out whiskey Winnipeg Whiskey Club and Friends. Um, there's even people outside of Winnipeg that I believe are part of our whiskey club, and you're all welcome to join. And um, I put a lot of our videos on on my YouTube channel, so check out those, so you can kind of see what we kind of do. And I kind of try to video the whole thing, so you can kind of take part in it. Um, but uh, we do we, we get together every month, and these these people are just absolutely incredible. It's about sixty percent guys and forty percent girls, so almost a fifty fifty match. And everybody's incredible. Everybody's amazing. Everybody has fun, and there is all walks of life and all um, different experience levels. There's some that are just getting into it and some that like like Will and James and Mark and Joe and they've got so much experience, you know? Um, so, um, yeah, so it's right across the board and everybody's welcome. It's such a, it's such a great club to belong to guys. So check them out and uh, kind of see what they're all about. But Anyway, uh, for the top five here, um, you know, this is the first time I have ever had the number five uh, whiskey of the year. And we were at James's place uh, earlier this uh, spring, I believe it was. Um, and I, I, you know, you, you can't have everything, right? But anyway, we went to James's place and we were do. he got... I don't know how you, this, this, these guys at this club can actually, they have so much stuff, but also so many great connections. And James was able to get this a fan freaking tastic connection. You get some really rare and old and long, long, long discontinued scotches. And they were all Bob Blair scotches. And we were sitting outside in his backyard smoking fantastic cigars having a great time bonfire tons of us out there in an absolutely incredible night and this is the first time i've ever had ball blair and it was something i always wanted to try but you, you, know, you can't have everything i mean you've only got so much room in the cellar but as soon as i had this i had to go out and get a bottle of this um i can't afford well it's or can't find the rest of the stuff he had. Like, it was just nuts with the had These like 30, 40 year old ball blares and stuff that hadn't been in existence since the 70s. And he managed to source all that. But this was good. This was very good. This was our starter dram when we walked in. He's like, here you go. Here's 12 year old ball blair. Go in and here's the rest of them. And we're going to do sampling. And then everybody got their glasses out. And like, this is the 15 year old, this is the 18 year old, this is the 25 year old, this is the 30 year old, here's a 40 year old, here's one that was only made for this, and blah, blah, blah. And it was just an incredible evening. But um, this is the 12 year old Bell Blair. Absolutely amazing as scotch. You can find this guy anywhere. He's under 100 bucks um, in most places. Winnipeg, I think he's about $109, but right now he's on sale for like 
90 so um so you can you can get this for around a hundred bucks maybe a little under but yeah this is a 12 year old Balbler highland scotch absolutely absolutely incredible zoom in here on the label here for you, you can kind of see what's going on with him there a uh, very 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 nice scotch you can see it's non-shell filtered not colored 46 percent ebv um just a an absolutely beautiful 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 scotch um it's uh like it's um 189.99 here at uh in winnipeg but i but they've got it on sale right now for about 94 bucks or something like that so you can always find them on sale but uh they're around around a hundred dollars so um just a really really great balanced scotch super easy to drink um just tons and tons of flavors to it um it's got like a real nice, like I said, a really nice balance to it of spice, vanilla, some lemon peel, um, crisp green apples, you know, on the aroma. Uh, on the palate, it's like, there's like just cinnamon spice, dried um, orange uh, slices, honey, nutty notes, cereal type notes to it. Um, and it's got like this really creamy, long, nutty dark chocolate kind of finish to it like it is a it's an absolutely absolutely fantastic uh fantastic scotch like it was when i had this i was completely blown away I, i've heard good things about it but i didn't actually know how good it was until we tried it at james's place so uh thanks james for having everybody over there with the whiskey club but uh yeah you opened my eyes to this one here this is um this is a really 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 good scotch so yeah this is uh like i said it's under 100 canadian or around 100 canadian easily found at any liquor store um a nice easy drinking scotch that anybody can get into doesn't matter what your experience level is it's not like it's it's something that's hard or you know terrible flavors or notes to it or whatever or really kind of a hot drink or anything like that it's it's not it's as um this is a this is a nice a nice a nice one here to get into for your um you know if it's your first or your hundredth scotch it's uh it's a, a nice a nice uh, nice drink uh, number four that i have um i had this particular scotch long before i really kind of got into scotch so it was okay i didn't uh, didn't think anything really of it i was more a rum guy wine that kind of stuff um and uh um and that's when i was flying i believe oh gosh i think that's when i was with uh little red air service up in high um Fort Vermilion, Alberta. So long, long, long time ago. So before, before I, my palate kind of matured and, uh, and, uh, got into something a little, a little better, but, uh, so I had it, I had it for friends that would come over people that I knew that were kind of into scotch or into whiskeys. And, uh, and I think it got corked as well, you know, um, cause I just kind of like sat it there and it was like sitting in in the bottle with hardly anything left in it so when i tried it again i'm like yeah this isn't very good anyway fast forward many 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 years up until last summer and i was at a wedding shooting a wedding out at um willow grove uh, willow grove orchard in argyle great place really nice spot uh, for a wedding and nice outdoor bar and everything like that sitting there talking to grandpa and he's like chris you have to have a scotch with me you look like a scotch man and i said you know what uh whatever the man's name was i think i was just probably calling him grandpa i said you know what sir i am a scotch guy and i would absolutely love to have a scotch with you i don't drink when i'm at a wedding i'm not being paid to drink there but 
um, if you have like one or two shots, you know, if the bride or groom say, oh, you have to have a drink with us, or if the grandparents or parents or whatever say they, they want to buy you a drink, I, I think that's okay. Just don't, don't have more than one, maybe, maybe two at the most, because you just, you're not being paid to drink. It's not professional. You, I've seen so many times DJs or videographers or other people in the wedding industry get all drunk and stuff and it's it's so unprofessional i mean they didn't pay me to drink when i was flying for canada or any of the other flying jobs that i had and it's kind of the same thing you know you're, you're there to do a job you're not there to drink but you also don't want to be a stuck up ass either so um so yeah so i went and had a, a little scotch with grandpa that he asked his granddaughter to get him a bottle of it for behind the bar for him and anybody else so so grandpa and i had a dram and i was completely blown away on how good this scotch was it was like oh my god are you kidding me this is really really nice this is way 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 better not even the same stratosphere of what it was when i first tried it 30 30 years earlier um really nice it's under 100 bucks it's 84.99 here in winnipeg uh, I believe I got this on sale for about 60 bucks. Um, and this is the Auchentoshan, uh Three Wood. Uh, very nice scotch from the Lowlands. Um, like I said, I was completely blown away about uh, on how good it was. And it was just a nice evening too, you know. It was a really nice night. Um, uh, great Great company, great wedding, awesome couple, fantastic grandpa, um, just a really nice country gentleman, you know, and uh, and it was just a perfect evening, you know, and we're sitting there and we're having a, a, a glass of scotch together, so it was, the moment was really good too, you know, and you can see it's 43% ABV, um, yeah, this is, a, like I said, a lowland scotch, and, uh, and it's a triple triple barrel so uh triple wood so you can see here that it's american bourbon a spanish oloroso sherry cask and then you've got the px sherry cask so you got the pedro jimenez sherry so those are the three different woods that they have in this particular scotch and boy i tell you this was really nice like i was so surprised on how good it was i've had other akatoshans uh, since, and I wasn't really, wasn't really impressed with them, but this one here is very nice. So if you get a chance to, to, um, like if you're not really sold on buying a bottle, just see if a friend of yours has, has a bottle or, or, or you're at a lounge or a bar, try a dram or try, try it before you buy a lot of liquor stores. Like I know in Winnipeg here, they do a lot of samplings and they've got tons of bottles in behind that you can sample. So if they have this, try it out. Um, I think you really, really, really like this one. Price is always good on it. Um, it's, uh, it's got like, it's very rich, cherry, dried fruits, toffee, hazelnuts, um, like kind of that, um, uh, chewy, um, spicy raisins, uh, to it. Um, just a very nice, very just a very nice complex scotch you know like like i i noticed like notes of cinnamon uh, spice dried fruit raisins um nutmeg um roasted uh, nuts um christmas spice cake uh, to it um just a really just a really nice nice scotch like a really easy easy to drink scotch uh, I wouldn't suggest, uh, with this one or the ball blair adding water to it. Um, because I think you'd really kind of ruin those awesome spices and those really nice complex flavor notes to them. Um, if you were to add water to these ones, I, I would just drink these ones neat in my opinion. Um, number three, um, this one here. This might be a little trickier to find. It was a limited release, but they released a lot of this. Uh, we can get it for $139 here in Winnipeg. Um, 
and it was really readily available. I think they've sold out now, but there's a lot of places here in Canada that you can find them. I'm sure there's lots of places in the States and the UK that you can get these guys here. Very, very, very nice scotch right out of Orkney. And this is the Highland Park cask strength release number three uh, to it. Um, very, very, very nice scotch. Um, lots and lots and lots of flavors to this one here. Show you the box here a little closer for you. Uh, big fan of Highland Park and and uh, and uh, the Isle of Orkney. Right across the sea is Denmark, and that's where my family comes from. Is from Denmark. Apparently, the um, the Danish prince married the Orkney princess. So there are a lot of Viking DNA in the Isle of Orkney. So a very, very, very Viking settled island, and uh, which I think is pretty, pretty darn cool. But the flavors on this scotch are absolutely insane. So intense, so absolutely amazing. Um, this is what the bottle looks like here. You can see it's 64.1% ABV. So nice, nice scotch uh, at cast strength. Um, this one here, you definitely do want to add water to, and that's the great thing about these cast strength scotches is that you can, you can dial in what you want for for flavor notes to it. So these high ABVs, like this, is really nice on its own and neat. And I've had quite a few of them neat um, without any water. But when you add a little bit of water to it, it really kind of creams it up, brings that alcohol um, content down, and really makes it like you bring out all these intense, crazy, crazy, crazy flavors. Um, like you got these like honey glazed, like lemony type of fruits, uh, fresh mango. You got this uh, cloudy heather honey, this whip. Uh, vanilla cream notes to it, you know, like uh, um, uh, sponge cake. There's some of this, this that peaty smoke kind of in the background, but it's not really smoky, but it's got a little bit of it there. Those roasted nuts, a little bit of um, of uh, like uh, Montreal uh, smoked meats uh, to it, but lots of lots of dried fruits, vanilla, caramel. Um, but like toasted ones, you know, like like whipped vanilla, uh, creamed vanilla, or um, like toasted um, like marshmallows over the over the fire, you know. But then you add like roasted peanuts to it. It's kind of got that, and, and that's when you what you get when you add just a little bit of water. You don't want to drown it by any stretch, but it's really nice on its own. Uh, very spicy on its own, like lots of cinnamon, wood, vanilla uh, notes to it when it's neat, but then you start adding a little tiny bit of water and you get all the rest of those really crazy notes to it. So this is $139 here in Winnipeg. Came out last year, spring for spirit release and um, they had a lot of them and I think they just recently sold out here in Winnipeg, but there was a lot of them produced. So you may be able to still find it. Like I, this is one that I was kind of, kind of on the fence with because it's like, it's a limited release, right? So I didn't really want to add any limited releases to this top five, but it's, it was very readily available. They, they made a lot of bottles of this scotch. So it's not like this ultra rare 10,000 bottle sold out in minutes type of scotch, you know, um, or one that's hasn't been around in, you know, four years kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's my number, number three. I mean, like this guy here could have easily been number two or three or anything from Aaron. Aaron can be a little tough to find though. That's the thing. Like we can't get any Aaron here in Winnipeg. We can get this guy. He's uh, he can get a little expensive. He's about 150 bucks here in Winnipeg. Um, very 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 nice bottle. I would say he's probably right up easily in the top five. Super 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 easy. Anything about Belvini actually, you know. But um, I uh, I already had a Speyside in in the uh, um, 
list and that was number five Bal Blair so that's why those ones didn't make it and the Bal Blair was a little bit easier on the price so that was the reason for that and sometimes Balvini can be a little tricky to find in certain certain places um, number two this is from Isla incredible incredible scotch and this is the one that I said like in Winnipeg it's 200 bucks but in BSW in Calgary it's only like $109 <clears throat> so pick it up at BSW but this is the Ardbeg Ugendal absolutely incredible incredible scotch see it's 54.2 percent um a beautiful 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 scotch uh, super 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 smoky and peaty lots of flavors of like smoked meat char um, campfire smoke um like like crispy fried bacon you know that's on this hot black skillet and you've got the edges that crisp up on the bacon you get that as well like this is just insanely insanely incredible scotch um one of my favorite art bags the number 10 is really nice but this one is just oh, man this is good i have the cory Vraken uh as well but i haven't opened that one up yet so that's going to be something we're going to get into in the new year uh, i do have an extra bottle of the um Ugendal, thank god because this one's almost gone uh, I'll probably have a dram of this tonight, maybe, because this is so, so, so good. Um, it's not limited. It's not hard to find. It's pretty easy to get kind of anywhere. Uh, really, really, really nice, uh, nice um, scotch. And yeah, you can look at that even there, right there. It says uh, triage, bacon, bonfires. And uh, yeah, they're not, they're not wrong on that. Lots of bonfire smoke to it. Lots of that bacon notes. Uh, if you've ever had Montreal smoked meat, oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. When I was in, I used to fly in and out of Ottawa quite a bit when I was with Bearskin Airlines. We'd overnight in Ottawa every weekend. There was two crews there. There was a Pilatus crew, which was I, which what I, I was on. I was the captain on the PC-12. Best airplane I ever flew. Out of the 40-some airplanes I've flown in my career, Pilatus PC-12 was always my favorite, you know. And uh, I would almost consider going back to flying to go fly the PC-12 again. It's the best airplane I've ever flown but anyway so we were we'd be in in Ottawa every weekend we get there on a Friday Friday night have all day Saturday off we wouldn't leave till Sunday in the in the evening after supper time and then they had the metro crew there and uh right across the road from us was this Montreal smoked meat place so we'd go in there and have our smoked meat sandwiches it was absolutely fantastic and then we we had our two crew cars um and so we drive over across into Quebec, into Hall, just over the bridge. And they had this little bar there. And uh, we'd go in and have a couple jugs of draft. And attached to the bar uh, was a go-kart racing strip. Indoor go-karts. And attached to the bar. So you just have you know, a couple jugs of draft and then you get into this go-kart that does like 90 kilometers an hour so like 55 miles an hour and you're zipping around racing these other you know other pilots and just general people from the public and then you do a couple of those races then you get out of your go-kart go back into the pub have a couple more jugs of draft not glasses but jugs because there was and it was so cheap there too it's like eight or ten bucks a jug have some hamburgers or whatever, watch a hockey game, get back into this race, this little racing um, go-kart, zip around again. By the time, I think, the fourth or fifth time we'd be racing in <laughs> stupid little go-karts, we're throwing our helmets at each other and we're grabbing at each other and there's, there's kids running around that's kind of trying to keep these idiots under control. Hey, you guys can't throw your helmets and you can't run other people off the road. I'm like, shut up, we can do what we want and it was fun it was a lot of fun uh and that was that was ottawa and we did that for about a year you know we went and opened up the base in in um out of toronto out of uh, buttonville there and we were operating uh the platus between uh buttonville and uh in ottawa and we just flew back and forth it was absolutely fantastic we were all on our own we we're a bunch of kooky kooky guys and 
I remember this one time my buddy Jay, Jay Daw and I, he was from Newfoundland, I'm from Winnipeg or from Stonewall. And uh, we're both captains on the airplane, so we both never flew together. But we both had one day off, so you can't go anywhere. So I called Jay up and I said, Jay, we got a day off tomorrow. And he goes, yeah, I see that. And I said, uh, you're not going home, are you, to Newfoundland? And he goes, oh, no, no, I'm not going home to Newfoundland. don't have the time for that, my son. And I said, yeah, I'm not going home to Winnipeg either. Do you want to go get all liquored up and do a trailer park boys day in Toronto? And he goes, yes, I do. So we went up and got a bottle of rum and wandered around downtown Toronto with a, with a one a glass each, a bottle of rum, and we'd go into all these little shops and fill it up with Coke. And uh, then uh, we ended up on the Mike Bullard show, and uh, we were on TV. <laughs> so it was a, a real trailer park. If you've ever seen the Trailer Park Boys, um, uh, ch ch if you haven't, check them out. They're super, super funny and really nice guys too. I used to fly them around quite a bit when I was with Air Canada. Got to know them really pretty well. And um, Mike or Bubbles' um, ex was uh, one of my flight attendants. And I saw them again at Comic-Con this year. So we spent some time catching up and shooting the shit and having some laughs. And uh, it's nice to see those guys again. But anyway, that was Jay Daw and I. We ended up on the Mike Bullard show uh, when we're flying out of, uh, out of Toronto, going back and forth to Ottawa. So, um, those are good days. But anyway, my number one scotch, uh, this is a, uh, a Speyside, uh, scotch. Um, yeah, so the Balbire was out of the Highlands. The Auchentoshan was Lowland. The uh, Highland Park cast strength was Orkney. The Ardbeg Ugandal was Isla. This one here is the Speyside. That's why, um, Balvenie never made it. This is an absolutely incredible, incredible scotch. Um, I have not opened this bottle yet. Uh, I have had this in the past many, many times. And I have been fortunate enough to have um, been able to just kind of sample this at, uh, at friends' houses and stuff. And we've had it a few times for our whiskey fest. Uh, we were over at Mike's place one time and uh we and i videotaped that and uh it's what's on my youtube channel um but we're at mike's and um they had this particular scotch in the glen 12 year old an amazing 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 scotch nice sherry cast scotch to it just a just beautiful at 46 percent um in my opinion, it doesn't need any water. Uh, if you want to put water in it, it kind of creams it up a bit. But in, in my opinion, it kind of takes those really amazing, amazing notes of dried fruit and figs and nuts and creaminess and and toasted toasted notes away from it. You know, it just kind of makes it a duller, creamier taste to it. So uh, I wouldn't put water with this one, but you know, some people have, I've tried it with water. It was good, but I like this one neat, but this is, this is an absolutely incredible, incredible scotch. It runs for, um, about $120. You can probably find it a little cheaper in certain places. Uh, lots of like, like the sticky raisin notes to it, mocha, um, and tons of, like bursts of like honey and dark chocolate and cinnamon and figs and raisins and dates and it's got a crazy 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 long finish to it like this is this is an absolutely absolutely incredible scotch if you guys are in the scotches this is definitely one you should have in your in your cellar in your collection so anyway that was uh that was my top five uh, for scotches for, for this year. Um, like I said, I wanted it to kind of be the, um, the any, any person type of scotch. So anyone can afford them, anyone can find them, and, um, and then anybody can kind of, you know, enjoy them. And it kind of takes you across Scotland. I didn't want to double up on on you know the, the districts and stuff of Scotland I wanted to kind of take you on a little little tour of it you know because I could have easily just thrown in all my Isla scotches and and those would have been my top five quite easily because I love love Isla scotches so 
but, um, or it could have been like all my Glen Alakies or a Glendronics or, um, yeah, but, uh, I wanted it to keep it a price range, um, uh, you know, an easy price range for people to afford, uh, easy scotches for people can easily find literally anywhere and, um, um, different districts of Scotland and, uh, and nice, good, easygoing flavors that aren't too crazy strong or too weak, you know, um, so that was, uh, that was the reasoning behind, uh, these top five selections. I'll never give them a point system though, you know, on it because I don't believe in points. It's, um, it's too arbitrary, you know, it's, that's just one person's opinion. Just like these top fives are just one person's opinion. But, you know, if you, if you do a, you know, point system, like, like say, for example, is Ball Blair, um, Next time I have it, it might not be as good as I remember it because I had an awesome experience with James and my friends, you know, and we had some great cigars and we were eating good food. So that may have um, changed the taste the complexity of it because of, you know, the mood you're in, what you've eaten, time of day that you've had, the temperature outside, the uh, the experience you're having. All that kind of changes these, these flavor profiles and these memories that you have in your head, you know, with these scotches or cigars or kind of anything. It doesn't matter, you know, um, even watches, you know, like, yeah, I love, I love my, this, this watch, you know, it's, uh, um, uh, you know, one of my Amigas and I absolutely love it and I wear it all the time, but is it my favorite watch? Well, today it is cause I'm wearing it, but tomorrow might be something different. You know, it might be, a my, a, a $20 watch that, uh, that, uh, that I've had for forever, you know, or something that I picked up, you know, it's, it, it, things change all the time, right? So that's why you'll, you'll never see me doing a, a point system on, on any of these things, you know, good for the guys and girls that do put points on it, but I don't put any, any stock in, in points. It's just points are for, you know, if if you don't know what to th to to think of something and you don't have a lot of experience in it, then yeah, maybe maybe a point system might be good. But I um, I just uh, I'm like like try and see what you think of it, you know, or or watch you know other YouTubers, you know, and see what they think of it because you know like hey, you know I I kind of like campfire smells, you know. Well, this is smells like a campfire, but I like it. Well. Maybe type it in and, and, and there'll be a lot of people out there giving you their opinion on it because it's only their opinion. And then maybe go to a bar or a lounge or a liquor store and if they have samples of it, try it out and see it for yourself. You may like it, you know. Um, and, uh, I mean, you, you may have had, you know, like a smoked meat sandwich, you know, and... and before you had that, you know, or crackers and cheese or something. And, you know, this will change the taste of it. Right. So and the next time you had it, you may have had a peanut butter sandwich or, or nothing at all. And it'll taste totally different. Um, one thing you don't want to do though, when you're trying scotches or cigars or whiskeys or rums or wines, anything like that, anything with a scent to it, do not wear cologne or perfume. Um, because that will absolutely destroy the the scent and you taste with your nose. Um, so like I've been to so many different tasting events and you've got these guys or girls that show up like that are just full of cologne or perfume and that's all you smell now and they're standing beside you and you're like, I can't smell the scotch or this wine or this cigar because all I smell is your cologne or your perfume and this may smell really nice but I'm not there to smell you. I'm there to enjoy whatever we're trying right so when you're when you're tasting this kind of stuff or going to an event like a like a wine wine tasting night or scotch tasting night or cigar night leave the cologne or leave the perfume at home um people around you will really appreciate it and so will you because it'll really affect the way you you taste and enjoy and enjoy this and some people may get really, really mad at you too, you know, depending on who it is. There's some people that take this kind of stuff really, really seriously. So anyway, um, 
thanks a lot for watching. I really, truly appreciate it, everyone. Have a, yourself a real Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All the best to you. Um, uh, we're going to be getting into a lot of really cool things coming up in the new year. Lots of new stuff to try. Lots of new stuff to get into. Lots of new experiences. Lots of traveling. Lots of kind of everything, you know, that we're going to be doing. And uh, and a lot more giveaways here too. So uh, please like and subscribe. Share this with anyone you think that may have some sort of interest in it. Have yourself a great day. I appreciate you guys more than ever. Anything you guys could ever possibly know. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And all the best. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.